Hi, this is Professor Fernandez, and we are working on class notes D in lesson 18. So in this class notes, I want to find the orbits and draw the face portrait of this system. And we're going to do that using the dy over dx method, and then also inserting the information about the direction using what we talked about in the previous video. And then finally, we will check with our website to make sure that things line up. And I'll, I'll make another comment there about how to input functions into that um, into that website. So first thing we'll do is head over to the dy over dx method. So dy over dx equals um, x plus xy squared over 2y. Remember, it's y dot over x dot. And if I factor out an x here, I get 1 plus y squared over 2y. And again, this looks to be a separable ODE. So considering this first order ODE, the question is, can I get all the y's on one side? The answer is yes, so it looks like that. And then can I get all the x's on, the, on one side? Um, there it is. Again, I'm following what I, what I call the physicist approach to, to solving the first order separable ODEs. So I integrate both sides here. Um, the left-hand side is effectively a chain rule. So, excuse me, a, a u substitution. This is u, 1 plus y squared. And then du would be 2y dy. So this integral is integral of 1 over u du. And that we know is the natural log of the absolute value of u. I'm emitting the plus c because I'm going to put it on the right-hand side. Um, this integral on the right-hand side is x squared over 2, and there's that plus c. So what I get is once I substitute back in what my u is from here, I get ln of 1 plus y squared equals um, x squared over 2 plus c. Um, I don't need the absolute values because 1 plus y squared is never negative. Um, and I'm going to exponentiate to get rid of the ln. So I get e to the x squared over 2 plus c. And I'm going to call e to the c k, constant k. So my final equation for the orbits is k e to the x squared over 2. Again, this is an implicit form for the orbits. We could graph it in what you know most of us are used to graphing in, in the plane in by solving for y. So we could express it in this way, plus or minus the square root of k e to the x squared over 2 minus 1. So what that's going to do for us if we were to graph that is if we take the positive square root, it'll graph stuff up here. And if we take the negative square root, it'll graph stuff down there. Um, so we can do it that way. Um, but you know, this, this is not a function that we are used to graphing. It's not like x squared or x cubed or, or something where we know um, what this is going to look like. So what I'm going to do now is say, you know what, this is as good as it gets effectively for finding the orbits. Um, I'll talk a little bit about, uh, about the direction in a minute. But let me go over to the direction field from the applet that we've been using um, in, in, in class. And then talk about the direction field. And then we can see the face portraits. And we'll, we'll see what these curves look like. So I'm going to switch over to that. Um, so I've, I've put in the system here. And I'll, and I'll make a quick note. You know, Notice that if I, if I um, get rid of this asterisk, this gives me an error. Right, so again, this is some of the syntax that sometimes is needed to get this applet to give you the direction field, putting in an asterisk for multiplication. If I do that, then it gives me the direction field, great. The other thing again is setting it to RK runga cut of four, but if I choose a H value here that's, that's a little too big, like the default of 0.1, then when I start looking at the um, numerical uh, solutions to the ODE and it, it, it traces out the orbits for me, you see that they look they look a little jagged. Um, you can see that that one right there looks very jagged. Um, so if I change the H value to 0 0.01, that fixes the jaggedness. So now I get slightly smoother curves. Um, so first of all, you can see from this direction field that this is a fairly exotic um, phase portrait and an exotic uh, it implies a fairly exotic face portrait and fairly exotic um, orbits. So I, I refer to this in, in, in my class when I um, always go through this example as the, uh, the Spider-Man phase portrait. 
um, because you can see in the middle there's kind of like a like an X. I'm trying to get the correct. There we go. That's that's fairly close. Um, yeah, almost like the, uh, the 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 emblem for Spider-Man. Um, but the orbits, if you uh, step back a little bit, um, seem to have this dual nature, and this is something that we will understand um, in the next lesson. So they seem to be kind of circular up until around x equals, I don't know, uh, uh, greater than 2 or less than negative 2, and then, and then they, they kind of no longer seem to be circular. They kind of, you know, go either all down or all up. So there's definitely something going on with this system that's interesting, and, you know, we, we won't get that get into that now. Um, but, you know, if I go back to the lesson notes, if you were to take a graphing calculator and you were to plot this uh, function, y equals um, positive square root of this and negative square root of this for varying k values, then you would see what um, is going on in this um, face portrait. And you would see that for certain values of k, you get those, you know, pretty much uh, straight down or straight up orbits. And for certain values of k, you get these more circular looking orbits toward the middle, um, near the origin of this um, phase portrait. So uh, direction, how do we determine direction? So let's go back and talk about that. So in this case, I'm gonna show you a different method to determine direction than what I showed you in the last um, video. So in the last video, I talked a little bit about picking a specific x value, uh, a specific point, and then um, substituting that into the system to see if you could discern which direction the orbit through that point is going. And that's useful, and I, I still advocate that as a starting point for examining direction. But here's something that's a bit more general. So one thing that you want to notice about the system is you want to try to figure out how you can determine the direction without having to plug in a specific point. So if I go here, I'll notice that um, if y is positive, x dot is positive. And if y is negative, x dot is negative. So what does that tell me? If I go to the phase plane, um, y positive means that I'm above the x-axis. So if I'm above the x-axis, then x dot is positive. This tells me that x is increasing. Okay. So I can just put like like a bunch of a bunch of arrows here. If I'm above the x-axis, uh, x is increasing. Um, over here, y less than zero, that's down here. That's below the x-axis. And this tells me then that the if y is less than zero, x dot is negative. So x is decreasing, decreasing. So we're we're getting we're going towards smaller values of x. So you can see how this method works really well because we're not relying on a particular point or set of points that we're taking our direction um, information from. If I do a similar analysis for the y dot equation, let's do that and see what it tells us. So if I do that similar analysis here, then what do I get? Well, so this one's a little harder, but not too bad. So um, if x is positive, then y dot is positive. If x is negative, y dot is negative. Great, so x is uh, positive is over here. This is the right-hand side of the plane, the right-half plane. And y dot is positive would tell me that y is increasing. So y increasing means that on the right half of the plane, I'm going up. up. <clears throat> um, by contrast, x less than 0, that's the left half plane. And if y dot is negative, so y is decreasing. Decreasing. So I'm going down. So on the left half plane, I am going down. All right. Um, and then 1 plus y squared is always non-negative. So that is not going to change the, the conclusions that I've just reached about what happens to y dots um, on either side of the y axis. All right, so if I piece these together, you can kind of tell what's going on in each one of these quadrants. So um, in this first quadrant over here, we have... Oops, I'm trying. There we go. In this first quadrant over here, we are moving up and then to the right. 
So whatever our solution looks like, it should be going like effectively up and to the right. So that way, right? So I'm just going to draw a very rough representative arrow that way in this quadrant. Um, in quadrant two, we're moving down and to the right. So down and to the right, looks like that. Um, in this quadrant three, we're moving to the left and down. So looks like that. Um, and then in this quadrant four, we're moving to the left and up. So to the left and up looks like that. Okay. So these are um, representative arrows. I noticed I just erased one of them. Um, so that was down to the left, I believe, Maybe like that. And then we can flip over to the direction field and let's just focus on quadrant one for the moment. So things should be moving, you know, northeast in that quadrant. Um, and you can see in the first quadrant up there, indeed, things are moving northeast. And in this direction field, if you look at the second quadrant, the positive y-axis, negative x-axis, um, things are moving southeast. So, and, you know, just looking at these side by side, you can see that the directions that we've determined, you know, comparing the, the box on the bottom and the, uh, the field on the top. Let me, let me clear the curves to see it easier. Oops. You can see that indeed these are, um, we, we've determined the correct direction for uh, all four of these quadrants. So again, this is a way that you can determine the direction of the face portrait more globally, which means that you don't have to plug in specific points. Um, and it complements what we, um, we did in the, in the previous lesson, in the previous video.